The beauty of Hunter x Hunter is the myriad of abilities you can create with Ned. You can be an emitter, a transmuter, a conjurer, an enhancer, a specialist. And within the confines of each of these different types of Nen usage, you can have a myriad of different abilities. But recently in the Secession Contest arc, we've seen a new type of Nen rear its ugly head. And that would be Guardian Spirit Beasts. See, Guardian Spirit Beasts are a Nen ability specific to the Kakin Empire. Specifically, they're a parasitic type Nen beast that's meant to protect the princes and the king of the Kakin Empire. And they are arguably the most important thing in the Succession Contest arc. But how are they made? What are their abilities? And how will they play into the greater story of Hunter x Hunter? Well, we're gonna answer all those questions and more in a second. But first, please guys, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Before we talk about Guardian Nen Spirit Beast, which I'm just gonna be referring to as Nen Beast from now on. I know that technically is inaccurate considering the fact there is also different kinds of Nen Beasts that aren't Guardian Spirit Nen Beasts, but now that I've cleared it up, you get it. We have to talk a little bit about the history of the Kakin Empire and more specifically about the Seed Urn. You see, the Kakin Empire was originally a very small country. And since it was a small country on a rather clustered continent, it was always at fear of being absorbed by bigger countries. In order to prevent the Kakin Empire from being absorbed by these bigger countries, though the first king of the Kakin Empire conjured a little thing known as the Seed Urn. Conjured using Nen, of course. Now, the Seed Urn is inspired by an ancient Japanese practice referred to as Worm Toxin, where several parasitic or poisonous bugs would be placed in a jar. And after a couple of days, the lid to this jar would be lifted. Whatever bug was still alive would be considered to have absorbed the poison of the bugs that it had eaten, and thus to be the most powerful poisonous bug in existence. The Seed Urn is compared to this for a couple of reasons. Though I'd be lying if I said these couple of reasons weren't technically theories at the moment. See, after creating the Cedar, the first king of Kakin had all of his princes fight for succession. This is a good time to remind you that princes is a gender neutral term in the Hunter Hunter universe. Well, at least within the confines of the Kakin Empire. It refers to both male and female children. And the way that the Cedar operates is that each of the princes would add their blood to the urn. They would do this while focusing on why they want the throne. After placing their blood in the Cedar and focusing on why they want the throne, purple smoke emits from the cedar, and from that purple smoke comes a little fairy sprite. And this little fairy sprite will place an egg in the mouth of the prince. And once this egg hatches, it turns into a Nen beast. And once you receive this egg, you're tied into the succession contest. You cannot leave. Should you try to flee from the contest, you will be killed by a myriad of ghostly dark hands. We learned this when the 10th prince tried to leave the Black Whale, but she turned around when she sensed the imminent death. The true way that a seed urn is similar to the worm toxin, however, and this is where we're venturing into the theory part of today's video, is that after one of these princes loses or dies, their body and possibly their spirit guardian, Nen Beast, is added to the seed urn to feed the tree of Kakin. We've only briefly seen one ceremony after one of the princes died and was fed to the tree of Kakin. But if we consider this in the fact that the seed urn is based off the worm toxin, where parasitic, poisonous, and paralytic bugs are added to an urn, and the strongest one that eats all the rest of them comes out, it makes sense to assume that these princes are pitted against each other so that the losers can be refed to the seed urn to keep it powerful. And with restrictions this dire in place, it would explain the strength of the seed urn. Because a conjured item without incredibly strict restrictions on it isn't that powerful. Certainly not powerful enough to make four Nen Beasts. So now that we know how the Seed Urn operates, sort of, we should talk about the Nen Beast created by said Seed Urn. See, the Nen Beast created by the Seed Urn can only protect those related to the deceased First King, because the Seed Urn is technically made with post-mortem Nen, which is why it still exists to this day. That could also explain a lot of its power, considering post-mortem Nen is stronger than regular Nen. These Nen Beasts feed off the aura of those related to the First King, and as they feed upon the aura of the person that they are protecting, they take a form and an ability based off the personality and composition of the human they're protecting. So in essence, these Nen Beasts are a physical representation of a person's personality. So if hypothetically you're an incredibly bad person, your Nen Beasts would look disgusting, revolting, scary. But if you're a nice, cuddly, and soft person, your Nen Beasts will reflect that. However, since Nen Beasts aren't technically created by the people that they're protecting, they don't necessarily listen to the instructions of the person they're protecting. In fact, every Nen Beast only listens to two rules. The Nen Beasts won't fight each other and the Nen Beasts won't attack somebody who's being protected 
by a Nen Beast, which ironically means that these princes can't use their Nen Beast to fight the succession contest, forcing the princes to use outside means to kill each other in order to feed those other princes to the Cedar and to strengthen their own Nen Beast. But these Guardian Nen Beasts are incredibly powerful. They can stop things like bullets, even if it's the person who they're protecting trying to shoot themselves in the head. We saw this when the ninth prince tried to commit suicide in front of the king. Nen Beasts are also aware of other Nen users. In fact, if a Nen Beast senses a Nen user can see them, they'll simply stare at the Nen user. Because at the end of the day, these Nen Beasts are Nen users. Which like, duh, but also not so duh. See, while the Nen Beasts are technically conjured Nen Beasts, it doesn't necessarily imply that they themselves would be able to use Nen. But these Nen Beasts actually sometimes have Nen affinities separate of the person they're protecting. That is to say that people like the fourth prince Tessierdinch could be a specialist, but his Nen Beast could be an admitter. However, since these Nen Beasts feed on the aura of the person they're protecting, if the person they're protecting goes into Zetsu, the Nen Beast disappears. The same could be said if that the person they're protecting runs out of aura. And ironically, a person's own Nen Beast can't be seen by said own person, or by anybody else of the same generation in the succession contest. The only people who can see a prince's Nen Beast are people from previous succession contest generations, like the king, or other Nen users who aren't tied into the succession contest. Karabika hypothesizes that these Nen Beasts are conjured. However, there's a problem with that because conjured Nen items are actually visible to non-Nen users. Because essentially, you can make an item like these headphones right here out of Nen. And on top of that, these Nen Beasts have been seen to phase through solid matter, which leans more to these Nen Beasts actually being an emission technique. Karapika hypothesized that these Nen Beasts are able to exist in this low risk state, aka not being able to be seen by non-users because of an insane amount of vows and limitations placed on the Cedar, which he hypothesizes that says, if a prince wins, all other of the Nen Beasts 14 of which that are currently conjured will disappear, meaning in the end that truly only one Nen Beast would be conjured via the Cedar. However, this goes against what Karapika is trying to accomplish in stalemating the succession contest. But now that we understand the basics of these Nen Beasts, we should talk about the individual Nen Beasts. Unfortunately, where we currently are in the story, it's pretty much impossible to rank who has the strongest and or weakest Nen Beasts. But we know what the majority of these Nen Beasts look like, we don't know the majority of their abilities. And thus I'll be going through the Nen Beasts and what we know about them from the King down to the 14th Prince. So we have to start with King Nasubi's Nen Beast, or as I like to call it, the Teddy Monster. See, we don't know the ability of King Nasubi's Nen Beast. We know it has 10 R arms, a face in the middle with a long protruding tongue, and is absolutely covered in what look a lot like boobs. Specifically, 12 on each side, leading to a grand total of 24. If that number has any significance, I don't know, because he has 8 queens? Which would be like 16, you know? And all we know about this Nen Beast ability is that it was able to block a bullet fired by the Ninth Prince. Understandably though, we can argue that this is probably the strongest Nen Beast out of any of the ones we've seen, considering the fact that this Nen Beast allowed him to win his own succession contest. We also know that this Nen Beast won't let King Nasubi die until this next succession contest is over because King Nasubi has a role to play in the contest. But based on the horrifying appearance of this Nen Beast, we can assume that King Nasubi is probably not the world's best guy. Which makes a fair amount of sense when you consider the fact that he pitted 14 of his children, one of which is quite literally a baby in a contest to kill each other. Up next is Benjamin, the first prince's Nen Beast. Benjamin's Nen Beast is actually a very good reflection of him. It's a mix somewhere between a beetle and a human. With beetle wings, chimera ant-like arms with huge hooked talons, and a regularly muscular legs. You see, Benjamin himself is a mountain of a man, and he takes a lot of pride in being as large and as powerful as he is, and thus his Nen Beast is most likely a reflection of this. But unfortunately, we haven't seen his Nen Beast fight. However, we can't say that for the Nen Beast of the second prince, Camilla. Camilla's Nen Beast looks like if a tree instead of leaves had olives, or a bit like a sea anemone. enemy. It's not as nearly horrifying to look at as either the King or Benjamin's Nen Beast, implying that Camilla, more likely than not, is a better person than either of them. Which is confusing when you think about Camilla's Nen abilities. Her entire Nen ability is based on her getting killed first. And while we technically know more about Camilla's Nen abilities than we do about her Nen Beast Nen abilities, we know that her Nen Beast is a manipulator, specifically a coercive type. Essentially, if somebody does a certain amount of things, they fall under the complete control of Camilla's Nen Beast. Kind of like how Krollo has to go through a certain amount of conditions to steal a Nen ability. If you complete a certain amount of conditions, Camilla's Nen Beast can take control of you. But for the moment, that's all we know. We don't know the conditions or the level of control that this Nen Beast can have over the person who goes through these conditions. Which brings us to the third prince, Zhang. 
Zhang Li. Zhang Li's Nen Beast is a big Dharma chakra, also known as the Wheel of Dharma, which is a piece of iconography very commonly used in Buddhism and Hinduism. However, this Wheel of Dharma has a face in a black flame that goes around the outside. This Nen Beast is a conjurer, and this Nen Beast conjures a coin every single day. As to what these coins do, at the current moment, we're not entirely sure. See, these coins, once conjured by the Nen Beast, increase in value every single day. Zhang Li believes that once he becomes king, these coins will confer abilities to the people he gave the coins to, and the value of your coin will translate to the strength of your ability. However, we don't know if that's the situation. Koven Toba, who was sent by the first prince to keep an eye on Zhang Li, presumes that these coins should be turned in for something. Presumably, once these coins reach a high enough value, these coins can be placed back into the mouth of the Nen Beast in exchange for something. But for the moment, we don't know. That brings us to possibly the worst prince out of all of the princes, the fourth prince, Tessierdnich. Tessierdnich's Nen Beast looks like a horse wearing high heels with a giraffe neck and a female woman's head. But honestly, when you understand his personality, it makes a lot of sense that that's what his Nen Beast would look like. You see, because Tessierdnich is obsessed with women, but he only wants women who he finds interesting, intelligent, or useful. And thus his Nen Beast is a representation of his twisted ideology that warps around women. And his personality truly shines in the mouth of his Nen Beast. And because while his Nen Beast head may look like a standard woman's head, when it opens its mouth, it shows a split tongue and jagged teeth, which is oddly symbolic of Tessierdnich as a whole, considering the fact that he's handsome, well-spoken, and well-read. But once you get to know him, you find out he's a dangerous psychopath. Now, we don't know the type of Nen that this Nen Beast uses, but we do know its abilities. We've seen this Nen Beast stretch its neck several meters. And this Nen Beast is the reason that we know that Nen Beast can phase through physical materials. As we saw this Nen Beast identify hostile aura in the form of the cockroach that was being controlled and neutralize it immediately while the cockroach was in a vent system that the Nen Beast couldn't fit into. However, detection of aura isn't this Nen Beast's main ability. This Nen Beast's main ability is based off somebody lying to Tessierdnich. And once you have lied to Tessierdnich, the Nen Beast will scratch you with its tongue and give you the warning that the next time you lie to Tessierdnich, you will cease to exist as a human. And from the wound inflicted by the Nen Beast, sores will begin to grow. This Nen Beast essentially makes sure that traitors will now have to become pawns to Tessierdnich, because should they ever lie again, they will die. Next up is the fifth prince. Dubepa's Nen Beast is a giant chameleon with wheels instead of legs. It's not horrifying, but it's also not not horrifying. But Dubepa has displayed herself to be not the worst prince by far. So this kind of makes sense. Dubepa's Nen Beast is a transmuter that can concoct basically any kind of chemical with any kind of property inside of its body. Meaning that if you wanted a chemical made that was going to make something happen in somebody else's body, Tubepa's Nen Beast could make it. However, this ability is a collaborative type, meaning that Tubepa's Nen Beast requires a partner. As to what that completely means, we don't entirely know yet. But we do know that this Nen Beast takes after Tubepa. As an incredibly cautious woman, her Nen Beast is also incredibly cautious, going so far to not even show itself to people that it believes could be Nen users and therefore could get eyes on it. And that leads us to Tyson, the sixth prince is Nen Beast. Tyson's Nen Beast is adorable because Tyson is adorable. See, Tyson's Nen Beast is a big old heart with an eye in the middle and four tiny little cherub wings. Tyson is all about love, specifically spreading it to the entire world. So the fact that her Nen Beast would be a giant heart with an eye on it makes a lot of sense. But Tyson's Nen Beast also does kind of paint her in a not so great light. See, Tyson's Nen Beast is a diffusion type emitter. You see, basically Tyson's Nen Beast lays little lizards. And these lizards, also known as eyewogs, attach themselves to anybody who reads Tyson's book. It's painted as listens to her teachings, but her teachings are or a book about spreading love across the world. This book is referred to as the Book of Tyson. And the more of the Book of Tyson you've read, the more aura you give to this iwog that is now attached to you. However, the more aura you give to this iwog, the more happiness you have. So basically, in summation, the more you read the Book of Tyson, the happier you are, which makes you more loyal to her cause. However, it's not all sunshines and rainbows. See, the Book of Tyson has one taboo. What the taboo is currently, we're not entirely sure. However, if somebody who has one of these iwogs breaks that one taboo, a harsh punishment will be doled out. And the level of that punishment will most likely be directly proportional to the amount of happiness and love they have towards Tyson, aka the amount of aura they fed to the Iwog. After Titan, we have the seventh prince, Luzerus. Now, we don't know a lot about Luzerus, like, at all, really, but his Nen Beast is a big centipede-looking thing with jagged teeth, so we can assume he's not the world's greatest guy. We do know the abilities of his Nen Beast, though. Luzerus's Nen Beast is a conjurer. It has the ability to conjure traps made out of whatever its target most desires. Desires. So if you're looking for money, it would conjure a trap made out of millions of dollars. Once you fall for this trap, the trap activates. And in essence, this is a very powerful Nen Beast. It's not only able to deduce exactly what you would want, it's also able to create it 
And once you have satiated your desire of this trap, you are caught. And I know I wouldn't have the self-control to say no to what I desire most on Earth, so I would fall for it. After Loser Earth, we have the eighth prince, Sale Sale. This Nen Beast not only reflected Sale Sale in appearance, but also in ability. See, Sale Sale's Nen Beast looked like a cheese ball with a bunch of mouths on it. It was disgusting and it spewed out smoke constantly. It was a very good representation of Sale Sale's unkept nature. Being a man who wanted to lay in bed all day with a harem of women that were brought to him because he was royalty. Of all of the Nen Beasts, we probably best understand Sale Sale's, because Rihan, one of the guards sent by the upper ranking princes, perfectly deduced the abilities of Sale Sale's Nen Beast so he could counter it using his ability Predator. This Nen Beast is a manipulator, and essentially by emitting smoke-like aura, everybody within seven meters of the prince would fall under the prince's spell. Now this is an induction type ability, which means that the spell these people fall under is relatively weak, but has the possibility to influence millions. But just inhaling the smoke one time isn't enough for you to fall under the prince's spell. Those who are already favorable to the prince require about eight hours of inhaling the smoke. And after they inhale the smoke for eight hours, one of Sale Sale's Nen Beasts in a miniature form will appear above their head. And this miniature Nen Beast will then begin to admit its own smoke in a two meter radius. Those who are impartial to Sale Sale's existence require about 70 hours. And while this control isn't necessarily very strong, the fact that the control can be spread basically like a virus all throughout people would lead to one of the securest dictatorships of all time, is at least what Rihan said. But Nen users are able to see this Nen Beast, and the smoke can simply be blown away. On top of all of that, this Nen Beast has no way to defend itself, which is representative of the fact that Sale Sale let his mother, one of the queens, do everything for him. And while this Nen Beast would lead to one of the securest dictatorships on Earth, it's not the strongest Nen Beast we currently know of. That would probably have to be Halkenberg, the ninth prince's Nen Beast. You see, Halkenberg's Nen Beast resembles a gargoyle, and it sits perched on top of his shoulders, which is interesting when you consider the fact that gargoyles are one of the remnants of paganism converted over to Christianity, and were put on churches to scare away demons and evil spirits, which lines up with Halkenberg's personality very well, considering the fact that he's the only prince actively trying to stop the succession contest, and he seemed to be the only prince who genuinely cares about the people he's going to be leading, almost as though he's warding off the evil spirits and demons that are his family. See, Halkenberg's Nen Beast is both an enhancer and a manipulator, and his Nen Beast abilities are based off of his own abilities. See, Halkenberg is one of the greatest archers in the world, winning silver at the World Archery Championship, but he also has a very natural charisma and a ton of supporters, and thus Halkenberg was bestowed a Nen ability by his Nen Beast, known as Possession Arrow. But to talk about Possession Arrow, we first have to talk about his Nen Beast's ability. See, Halkenberg's Nen Beast places a feather on the back of his hand in the back of every single one of his guards' hands, including those who aren't even necessarily loyal to Halkenberg, like guards who serve other princes. Upon receiving this feather, you're knocked unconscious. And while you're unconscious, your memories are altered so you forget being knocked unconscious. This feather will disappear after 10 minutes if you're not loyal to Halkenberg. And by receiving this feather, it's basically like undergoing a Nen attack. And if you remember, if somebody who doesn't use Nen goes under a Nen attack, they will awaken to their own aura. This is basically what happens, except it's only a half awakening. Those who previously couldn't use aura still can't use aura, but they produce more than a usual amount of aura. And when there's more of these feather bearers close to each other and they share a will for something, that aura gets even stronger. And the amount of aura that this group can garner through this ability is said to be in the top tier of Nen abilities. So much so that Prince Benjamin, arguably probably the strongest out of all of the princes, has found Halkenberg to be his biggest threat. On top of this, we've seen Halkenberg's Nen Beast use enhancement techniques to stop a bullet that Halkenberg was trying to shoot into his own brain. Now that we understand how the feather thing works, we can talk about Possession Arrow. Halkenberg could use the aura generated by those around him with feathers on their left hands to either make an impenetrable defense around his body or generate a bow and arrow with his arms. This bow and arrow shoots a Nen Arrow that can surpass through any defense. This Nen Arrow will not stop until it's made contact with its target. And upon making contact with its target, the consciousness of one of his followers will be transplanted into the person hit with the arrow. This makes whoever the consciousness left's body collapse and stay collapsed until the person they've switched into dies. However, the reason that this ability is so strong is most likely because Halkenberg stakes his life on every single shot, meaning that if he misses, he gives up his own life. And thus this technique requires three different Nen categories. Transmutation to create the bow, a mission to shoot the arrow, and manipulation to control the target. It's 
very powerful and it was most likely given to him by his Nen Beast. But enough about Halkenberg, let's get to the 10th Prince, Kachu, kind of like a sneeze. You see, Kachu's Nen Beast actually technically doesn't have a form. We simply know its name without you. It's a mutual cooperation Nen Beast. In a bit like Camilla's Nen ability, it has no use until either Kachu or the 11th Prince or the 11th Prince Fugetsu die. Once one of them dies, the Nen Beast will take over the corpse and it will protect the one who didn't die until they die from death. And this is because Kachu and Fugetsu are best friends. And thus Kachu's Nen Beast is a reflection of Kachu's want to protect Fugetsu, even if hypothetically Kachu wasn't around to do it. Now Fugetsu's Nen Beast is also pretty interesting, and it's also dependent on Kachu. You see, Fugetsu's Nen Beast manifests as a small, ornate little door, and it's based off the game Magical Worms that Fugetsu and Kachu used to play as kids. This door, which was named by Fugetsu Outgoing Door, can take Fugetsu to her sister, Kachu. However, once Fugetsu steps out of the outgoing door, a different door appears. This door is referred to as the return door, and this door can only be opened by Kachu. This return door, however, can take Kachu and Fugetsu anywhere they want to go or have previously been. It's essentially teleportation if Kachu and Fugetsu are together, and they try to use this technique to leave the Black Whale, which is how we learned if you leave the Black Whale, you die. Now onto the 12th prince, Momose. Momose's guardian spirit looks cute, but is not. See, Momose's Nen Beast looks like a human-sized hamster with really jagged, creepy teeth. The Nen Beast will ask people around Momose if they're free, and if you respond no to the question, it will create a little clone of itself with eight legs like a tiny little hamster spider. That clone will follow you around asking if you're free until you answer yes. Once you finally say yes, you are free, you will be manipulated into killing all of those around you, with a preference for bodyguards. And since the only people that can see the Nen Beast and therefore be asked if they're free or not are Nen users, this ability only works on Nen users. However, using this ability is incredibly taxing for Momose. So even after just manipulating one person to kill a bunch of people, she needs to sleep for a couple of days. This is a horrible, horrible ability that makes people kill indiscriminately and is probably the weakest Nen Beast we know of. Up next, we have the 13th Prince, Mariam's Nen Beast. Mariam is a toddler, so to say that its Nen Beast is a reflection of his personality is kind of a stretch. We don't know a lot about him. We're getting pretty deep into the princes here. Mariam's Nen Beast resembles a Chinese dragon. And according to Hanzo and biscuit it's growing at an abnormal rate significantly faster than any of the other nen beasts and its abilities aren't very much in line with what we would consider the abilities of a dragon see it's hypothesized that its current nen ability is creating a barrier around room 1013 where mariam is staying and the creation of this barrier stops anybody from the outside walking into prince mariam's room meaning that the only people that will ever get close to prince mariam are the people that were currently inside of the room when the barrier was created if you try to walk into room 1013 the nen beast will send you to an empty version of Prince Mariam's room. And even if you were in the room when the barrier was erected, if you leave the room and try to re-enter, the situation is the same. And this essentially ensures that Mariam is only going to be surrounded by those who don't have ill will towards him, which is very good for Prince Mariam considering the fact that he is a toddler and basically has no guards of his own. Which leads us to the 14th and last Prince, Wobbles Nen Beast. We don't know what it is. That's it. That's that's the whole we don't we know nothing about it. We've never seen it. We don't know its abilities. We don't know what it looks like. Which probably means it's gonna be sick as hell. Especially when you consider the fact that Karatika is the one protecting Wobble and like wobbles a baby and nobody wants to see a baby die. Unless you're like a Spartan on a cliff top. And yeah, that's it. All the spirit guardian Nen Beast in Hunter Hunter explain. We'll probably go back in a couple of years and rank all of these once we know all of their abilities. But for the current moment, it's just best for you to understand what these Nen beasts are, what they're represented of, and what we know about their current abilities. But what's your guys' favorite Nen Beast? Tell me in the comments below, and while you guys are down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Personally, me, I like the 24 titties monster.